For the next word problem that we're going to encounter, we need to understand what it is to be consecutive integers. What are consecutive? What does it mean to be consecutive, first of all? Well, continuous means one right after the other, right? Kind of going in the same pattern, one right after the other. Like the Astros before yesterday had won six consecutive games, right? So that meant one, two, three, four, five, six ones in a row. And of course they lost, which we figured they would do. They're, they, were, they were living beyond their means. <laughs> uh, what are integers? Positive and negative whole numbers, those guys that you like to see. No decimals and no fractions. So an example of consecutive integers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, right? One right after the other. If you look at them on the number line, the very next integer after 1 is 2, and then 3, and then 4, and so on. Do you all agree? What if I start with negative 10? What's the next integer after negative 10? Negative 9. It's going to be negative 9. And negative 8, negative 7, and so on. So, if I were to start with x, if x was representing an integer, how do you represent the very next integer after that? Build off of x, do not throw out y. x to the first. And that's what this guy is, x to the first x squared. So if 1 is x, you're telling me that 1 squared is 2? How did I go from 1 to 2 and then to 3 and 4? How did, how did I do that? Plus one. I added 1. I added 1. I added 1 and so on, right? <laughs> Let's try this again. How did I go from negative 10 to not, negative 9? I added 1. I added 1 and so on. Do you all agree? So if I'm starting with x, <laughs> what is this little guy right here? <laughs> x plus two. It's x plus one, then x plus two, and so on and so. You understand? Like if you say if you say two x from negative, oh, so you're saying this is times two from negative ten to negative nine is times two. Because whatever you say has to be able to be repeated. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my throat is very dry. <laughs> yes, one to two, you could multiply times two to get there, right? But to go from two to three, are you multiplying times two again? No. No. And will that same pattern be able to exist here? No. So, oh, that's right. You're wrong. Just think, one day you'll be able to show your children and your grandchildren these videos. I'm not always in his class. Maybe you'll be able to hear your own voice. Consecutive even integers, give me an example of that. Two, One, two, well, I mean three, two, four, four, six, four, six, eight, eight. Two, four, six, even, even numbers, right? If I start with negative 22, what's the next even integer? Negative 20, negative Are you 20. sure about that? And then what? Negative 18. Uh-huh. And then it keeps on going and going, right? If I start with x, what's the pattern to go from one number to the next? 2x plus 2, that's 4. I would add 2, and I have to add 4 to my original. I keep adding 2 to that, right? And it would keep getting larger and larger as I go across. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Now for the last guy. Consecutive odd integers. Give me an example of consecutive odd integers. And did you know there's even a clothing store that's consecutive odd integers? 579. 579. I have a sister, that's why it's okay for me to know that. <laughs> if I start with negative 11, what's the next 
odd integer. Negative 9, negative 7, and so on. Do you all agree? If I start with x, and if x is representing an odd integer, how would I get to the next odd number? X plus, x plus 1, x plus hmm. Now look back up here with consecutive even integers. You added 2, you added 2, you added 2, and so on, right? What am I doing as I go from 5 to 7 to 9? What am I doing? I'm adding 2. I'm adding 2. I'm, I'm, I'm all these guys, I'm adding 2, right? So if I want consecutive odd integers, if I add 1, I'm going to be in trouble. But if I add 2, I'm back at an odd number. If I add 4, I'm back at an odd number. And it's very easy to forget that until you look at a number line. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Even though those are even numbers, right? Two, four. The adjustment is an even number, because look at your odds. One is an odd number, right? How do I stick with an odd number? I add two, because I have to skip over the even ones, right? Add another two, add another two, and so on. Every time I'm adding 2, I can stay on an odd number, provided I start on an odd number. If you start on an even number and you want to stay even, what do you do? You have to skip over all of the odd numbers, right, by adding 2. So even though these have the exact same pattern, what's different about these guys? What's the difference between these two patterns? One starts with an even and one starts with an odd. This guy is understood to be an even starting point, and this guy is understood to be an odd starting point. So basically it's the same thing for the even and odd on the x. Right. It's just, it's just shifted. Because if it's the same pattern, it would look like this. But if you shift it off by one, then you're not nobody's inter intersecting each other. Okay. Fun with consecutive integers because that leads us to the next word problem, right? So here's the last word problem that we have for this particular section. Talking about the number of students that Mr. Smith has in his classes, and it says they are consecutive even integers. That means that all of these answers are going to be what? Even. even. Now, does it tell you anything about how many students he has in the first, second, or third classes? You don't, you don't know where you start? But here's what we do know. We can find a way to represent the number of students in each class. And we can just say something like this, the number of students in class 1 and the number of students in you know, class 2 and so on. The only thing that we know about the number of students that he has in his classes is what? We know the total, but we also know the type of numbers we have here are what? Consecutive and even, right? So how many students are in his first class? Do you know? So what should I say? I don't know how many students. So I'm going to call you X. How many students does he have in the next class? Why would you say X plus 2? Is it X plus 1 or X plus 2? What type of consecutive integers are they? Regular or even or odd? They're even integers, so you have to add 2 to stay even, right? How would you represent the number of students in the third class? And just so you're with me on this, suppose he had 30 students in the first class. That's even, right? What's 30 plus 2? 32 and then 34. Would 30, 32, and 34 be consecutive even integers? 
Yes. Would it add up to give me 72? No, so I know that's wrong, but it gives me an idea about how things are supposed to work. So my total number of students, just like you guys were telling me, does equal 72. So what's the equation that you will write? X plus x plus 2 plus x plus 5. Right, x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 equals 72. Now this is just an exercise in, you know, can you solve an equation? What are you going to do here? Combine like terms. To get what? 3x plus... You do combine like terms, you get 3x... Plus 6. Plus 6 equals 72. Then what? Subtract 6, so 3x equals what? 66. Divide by 3, and you're, you end up with x equals 22. So what that tells me is that the number of students in the first class is equal to how many? 22. How many are in the next class? 24 and then 26. Does all that give me 72? Yes. Yeah, it all gives me 72. So when it comes to answering the question, how many students are in each class? Now you could just say something like this. He has classes with 22, 24, and 26 students. Consecutive, even integers.